Folks, on March 27th, a black college student disarmed a gunman at a restaurant. His reward was getting shot four times by San Jose, California police officers. Kayon Green has filed a lawsuit. He and his attorney, uh, Udante Point, join us from Oakland, California. Gentlemen, how are you? I'm well, sir. How about yourself? Doing great. So uh, what actually happened here? Uh, and how in the hell did you want, end up the one being shot by cops? Honestly, I, I don't know. I was just trying to protect me and my friend. That's all. I just wanted to get out of there and make sure we could get home safe. But unfortunately, I was shot by the people who were supposed to be doing what I was doing. So when you say you were trying to protect your friend, so walk us through what happened. You're in the restaurant, and then what? A gunman storms in? Tell us what happened. Um, no, it was just kind of like a conflict started between another person and I. And honestly, I just tried to de-escalate it, but... Once I was hit, as you can see in the video, I just had to defend myself as what anybody else would do. So we're showing the video right now. Um, and um, is that is that you on top of the gunman? Um, no, that's me on top of his friend. The gunman is actually being apprehended by my friend right there. My friend is also a hero. He was tussling with the guy for a long time. So your friend, I, your friend is. So which one he's is? He's holding you? him. He's holding. He's holding the guy right now. As you so your see. friend is standing up. Mm -hmm. He's and holding. I, I'm the, trying to get. Yeah, I'm. I'm walking out. I thought my friend was going to follow me. I, I was unaware that there was a gun at the time. Got it. And so this yeah. is another camera angle right here, correct? Yes, and I come back in at the bottom left. Okay. And we began to fight a little bit. So one guy had a gun? Um, yes. And that's my, fr my friend and him are tussling for it right now. On the right side or left side? Left side. Gotcha. And you are in the black shirt uh, on, top of the, uh, on top of the guy here. And this, is, this right here is when I get the gun. That, that's when I realized there was a gun. I Got tried it. to grab my friend and walk out, but he asked for help. And honestly, I didn't know why he was asking for help, but... Once I saw it, I just I just helped him out, and I was able to grab the gun. Got it. Um, and so, at what point then? So is this y'all leaving the rest? What, 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 walk us through this video here. Okay, right there. I'm just trying to back out. I'm telling the guy like, man, we just want to go home. We we we're athletes. We don't want to shoot anybody. We don't want to hurt anybody. We're just trying to walk out of there. And as you can see, the guy is grabbing me by my clothing. And I'm just backing out. I never once pointed the gun at anybody. And then right after that, and I, I turned around, and the police were right there. So when you so 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 all of a sudden, so there is there no video of the police shooting? Oh no, there's multiple videos. They just haven't posted them. Um, I'm pretty sure the officer they have body cam, um, and also somebody recorded from I believe the right of the taqueria of them shooting right there. That's the video right there. You can see it. But the officers haven't dropped the body cam yet. Um, uh, you don't take point. Um, so again, w w what is weird here, and this is one of those things where obviously officers, you come onto the scene trying to ascertain uh, who's who. Uh, how in the world does your client, the one, end up being shot? Uh, you're on mute. You're on mute. Now, I'll keep talking. Let's see if you have your audio up. Go ahead. Am I better now? Yeah, we're good. Go ahead. Great. Yeah, my client winds up getting shot because the officers failed to just follow basic common sense and, frankly, their training, as opposed to assessing the scene to determine what's going on and not rushing into what was a crowded restaurant with uh, any number of people in there, and they don't know who's innocent versus who are the bad guys. And instead, they should have formed a perimeter and uh, essentially given orders for people to come out with their hands up and done this in a more orderly fashion. Instead, they rushed in, guns blazing, and it wound up with my client being shot as he's inching his way with his back to the with his back to the police and his back to the street. So my client essentially is has the door propped up with his left hand 
And in his left hand, he has the gun, and the gun is pointed in the air. The police in their press conference claim that uh, the gun was pointed at people. It's certainly, even from the video that the police have released up till now, edited videos, they cherry-picked what they made available to the public. But it does not show my client pointing the gun at the police. It certainly doesn't show him pointing the gun at anyone in the restaurant when he was shot. So that begs the question, what was the basis, the lawful basis, for the police to ever shoot and fire a single shot? And I submit, based upon the information that I have from my investigation and the videos and the pictures that the police show, there was no lawful reason to fire that shot. And, and in fact, what I think is very telling here is that only one officer fired. But there were several officers there, if you look at that bystander video, but only one officer shot. So that leads us to the conclusion that that officer overreacted, that officer, maybe he panicked, that officer misperceived what he thought was an imminent threat, but he was the only person to see it that way. And unfortunately, my client paid the price for his grave mistake. Fortunately, we're here today and you can interview him and I can represent the young man and get to know this great young man and hopefully get him back on the road toward his goal of continuing his education in a four-year university and perhaps uh, an NFL career as opposed to talking about and placing pictures up on the screen and talking about how nice of a young man he was while he was alive, but tragically the police killed him. But he was really only an inch away from, from losing his life, and that is a shame, and that's why we filed a federal civil rights lawsuit. Uh, this reminds me of the um, security guard, the black security guard in Illinois, who broke yes. up a fight, um, and cops come on the scene, they shoot they shoot the uh, they shoot uh, the security guy, uh, the bouncer, and people were yelling, "What are you doing?" And because again, how the laws are, they walked away. They did, they, they they were never indicted or charged as a result. And that brother, he's dead. Yes, and that fortunately, you know, that wasn't the case here in terms of the ultimate price that that brother, who was the security guard, paid with his life. Here, Mr. Green. Uh, survived. Uh, and now, you know, he's in the fight of his life to regain the life that he had worked for, to regain, you know, his hopes and dreams, and is on a long road to recovery. And he's fighting just as hard uh, to regain that life as he had to when he was in that restaurant to protect not only his life, but the life of everyone else in that restaurant. Keon, have you, um, are you still impacted by uh, the shooting. Uh, are, were you able to continue playing football? Were you? Are you um, still any 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 after effects uh, from those gunshot wounds? I'm affected tremendously, sir. Uh, honestly, I I still get flashbacks of it. I keep, you know, I constantly I see myself looking at my hands, and I had all the blood on my hands. I just I see that every night, and it, it's hard to sleep. And also, I um, I can't play football this season. I don't know when I'll be back. Yeah, I, I can't run. I can't do anything. I can't lift weights anymore as of right now. Hopefully, I'll get back to that, though. Um, you were shot four times. Where were you shot? I was shot once in my knee, twice in my arm, and once in my stomach. Man, uh, questions uh, from my panel. Matt Manning, you're first. Yeah, my question is how the police have not immediately gotten rid of you as a suspect. I mean, presumably they have surveillance video from the entire restaurant where they can see the beginning of the confrontation. They can see that the gun was not pulled out by you and they can see that you were defending yourself and other people in the restaurant. I'm a former prosecutor. It seems pretty basic. What have they told you and your attorney, Mr. Point, about why they haven't immediately invalidated you as a suspect? Honestly, we haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything from them. No, no sorries. No, I was wrong. No, anything. They haven't taken responsibility for none of their actions. And that that's honestly just what we're waiting on. Right. I'm not sure. If, yeah, that the police heretofore, you know, they treated him as a criminal suspect while he was in the hospital. And then uh, after he was released, they had this press conference where they tried to justify their conduct. 
but not in one time. And all they had to do was one sentence out of the thousands that they uttered to try to explain away their bad conduct. Did they ever apologize? Did they ever say, you know, we got this wrong, we made a mistake, or simply offer words of support for someone that they knew was a hero, that they knew hadn't done anything wrong? Instead, it's the same playbook that we see repeated over and over and over again throughout this country dealing with the police, which is they want to explain it away, and then they want to victim shame and, and present it as if the person who was the victim decided or brought the victimization on themselves. But that's also why we're filing the lawsuit, because it was clear to me and clear to Keon, as well as his family, that the city of San Jose and their police department, you know, don't have the best of intentions for someone who is a hero. Instead, they want to mitigate the damages and force this young man to fight for justice. And we're here to do that. Yes, sir. That I'm sorry if I go ahead. To anybody. No, go ahead. Yeah, that, that hurt me pretty badly when I got in the hospital and I finally was able to watch the news and they were saying that I pointed the guns at the officers. It's just like, how can you get that wrong? Out of everything that goes on, as a young black man, I'm pretty sure everybody my age knows to never do anything like that. So it just, you know, it kind of hurt me the picture that they painted to try to paint me as a criminal when I've never once put myself in that position. I always try to do right and go to go the other way, which is right. Kelly. First and foremost, I am so sorry, uh, Mr. Green, that you had to go through this trauma because that's exactly what this is. And I'm actually looking through the complaint that your lawyer has so beautifully drafted. And I paused at uh, Section 23, or Clause 23, rather, where they uh, it says that you were handcuffed to your yes. hospital bed and wasn't able to see your family for three days until yes. uh, after the incident. Um, yes, ma'am. How, I mean, given, one, you were shot, two, you were assaulted. I mean, how are you dealing with this trauma? Because that's exactly what this is. It is trauma upon trauma. How are you reconciling being a hero in the situation? How are you reconciling that truth with the fact that you've been so demonized? Um that's my first question. And um, to follow up, how can we support you guys in this endeavor so that you can be made as whole as you can from your community until the trial is over, of course? Okay, well, I'll start off with dealing with the trauma. Honestly, it's, it's very hard. It's not something that I ever thought I'd be going through. But something that helps me is like just being here, being around my mother. I am at my mother's house, just being around my mother, being around my little sisters. That kind of helps me a lot. But at the same time, you know, it's all fine and dandy when people are around. But once you're by yourself and you're in the room alone, and then all those memories just come back, it it, it hurts. Like it doesn't. Uh, are you in therapy? Really it. Um, no, not yet. Not yet, man. But I'm, I'm seek. I will seek out to get it to get help. Michael. Um, well, first of all, um, Keon, you know we're, we're grateful that you're still alive because um, I mean this is a crazy situation and you truly are a hero as well. Um, but for uh, Attorney Pointer and maybe Keon may want to uh, answer this as well. So in in looking over this information, you hit on something that's really really important. Uh, Turning pointer. You said only one police officer fired four shots. Only one police officer fired. So my question is, one, how many officers were there on the scene? Two, um, did how how has has the uh, uh, San Jose Police Chief Anthony Mata addressed why only one officer fired shots and the other ones didn't? Um, no, they have not addressed it. They've only said what they thought, not what they knew. It's kind of weird. Yeah. And also, I don't know. I really didn't know how many people were there. You know, it happened so fast. I just turned around and they were right in my face. I didn't have a chance to, to, to react at all. I was just being shot after I turned around and saw it. So what's what's clear here, and you, you, you hit on it, is that, you know, there were several officers. If you look from that bystander video, which is the video 
uh, that was posted to YouTube, which you showed earlier in this segment, that's from outside the restaurant, you see that there's, you know, you could count two, three, four, five, maybe six or seven officers there, right? And they're all right. within the same or similar position. Only one officer fired. So that, to me, is indicative that there was not an imminent threat, because if there was, and, 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 and Mr. Green had pointed the weapon at the officers or was in a movement to where it was going to kind of uh, graze the crowd, if you will, then more than one officer would have fired their gun. When you have a situation where there are several police officers right there and only one uses deadly force, that's indicative of the idea and, the, for me, the fact that I would certainly point out to a jury that this officer overreacted, that this officer misperceived, had an unreasonable fear, had an unreasonable belief of some type of imminent threat that he responded to. All his other fellow officers didn't fire a single shot. And to answer your other question, no, the police chief did not touch that topic at all during the course of their 30 to 40 minute press conference. Instead, Interesting. they uh, hid the officer's name and identity and just said that he was a four year veteran. But to me, that does little to satisfy the public interest in knowing the name of this officer in order to determine, does this officer have a background? Is this the first time he's used, questionably used deadly force? And so these are all the things that we're demanding, is that if a police department wants to uh, improve the public trust, if the police department wants to continue to, to police in the public's name, then they need to be transparent. And so they need to release the officer's name, they need to release all of the body cams, as well as the surveillance videos, so that the public can stand in judgment as to what this officer did. But just based upon the evidence that the police has released to this date, and as well as witness interviews that I've conducted and I'm sure the police have also talked to, it's clear that Mr. Green was a hero here. He was aggrieved, and he deserves all of the justice that our civil system affords, period. All right. Thanks. Gentlemen, we appreciate both of you being with us. Uh, please let us know uh, what the outcome of this lawsuit is. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, back to our Roll Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. <laughs> Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roller. I love y'all. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?